Hey guys, thanks for joining us for another Oil Food Basics video blog. My name is Derek Craig here, and we are going to be talking about hydrocarbon migration today and a host of other topics associated with it. So stay tuned, and we're going to be using a little bit of a different method today, um, kind of like the whiteboard method. And if it looks like a child drew the photos, it's because I drew them. <laughs> so no artist here, uh, but we're going to do the best we can. We're going to be talking about a host of different topics associated with hydrocarbon migration as well. We're going to be talking a little bit about the um, generation of hydrocarbons, as well as, of course, the migration. Also, where we can find them and when they can end up at surface, what the causes might be. And we're going to dive into some of this and more. So stay tuned. So let's first set the scene here. So we've got the basics of a stratigraphic um, column here, just so this is just an example. All of, all of this is essentially blown out of proportion because I'm calling this the surface and then we have sandstone source rock and I'm going to have overburden on top of it. So just put this all in perspective. This isn't all obviously drawn to size. This is just for our learning. So here we have source rock, which we're going to be calling the shale. Typically shales are the source rock. So source rock is where the hydrocarbons are sourced from. <laughs> and so that's where the organic matter was deposited in this layer and then given time and heat and pressure from above. So above all that you have overburden, okay? So you have overburden, all of this, all of this pressure that's on this source rock, it's gonna over time generate hydrocarbons. So the hydrocarbons, again, is sourced from the source rock and typically that's gonna be shale, so organic rich shale. Also, before I go into more in depth on the migration and the generation of hydrocarbons and where they're at, Keep in mind here that above the source rock, we have sandstone. So sandstone in this example is above it. And then above that, we're gonna have another layer of shale. Um, we're gonna call that the confining layer or the trap. We're gonna get into more of that here in, the, in a little bit, but keep in mind this is what we're, just the, the stratigraphic column we're looking at. And then above that, we're gonna have other rocks. We're not really caring about that for, these, for this example. So we're not, those are gonna be a bunch of different layers on top of that of varying rock types. So that's gonna be above it, but we're just focused on these formations down here. So again, hydrocarbons are going to be generated by heat and pressure. So you have organic matter originally and then with heat and pressure and time, it's going to generate hydrocarbons within the individual pore spaces of that rock. So in this image here, I have the different rock grains shown here in black. And then the space that's going to be in between those grains, that's where the hydrocarbons are going to be found. So we refer to the amount of space there as porosity. And so the hydrocarbons are going to be in the pore space of that rock. Again, it's important that you guys realize that the hydrocarbons are going to, again, migrate upwards until they get stopped. So they're gonna be stopped by either something that's, that's structural and impermeable. So in this example, again, we come back to the shale layer here. We call it the confining layer of the trap. So this shale typically is, is way less permeable than sandstone and other rock, uh, sedimentary rocks. So this, let's say this, uh, these hydrocarbons here in the source rock is going to migrate upwards. They're going to get out of that and they're going to go into the sandstone. The sandstone is relatively permeable probably compared to the shale. And of course, all of this is going to depend on the exact, type, the exact reservoir. But it's going to migrate upwards and it's going to migrate until it hits that cap rock and then it's going to stop. Now, if that cap rock wasn't there, it's just going to keep on going upwards given time, right? So it's going to keep on going up. But in this case, it's going to stop there at the confining layer, the trap, because it's way less permeable. It's just coming to a halt there. And even though shale is way less permeable than sandstone, you can still have migration through it, especially out of the source rock. That's how we end up with conventional reservoirs. And we're gonna talk about that here in just a couple minutes, so stay tuned. But another way that oil and gas or hydrocarbons can migrate is through folding. So natural fractures in the rock can create an easy pathway for the hydrocarbons trapped within the, the source rock or wherever they're at currently to again, go further upwards. So in this example, we have the hydrocarbons here in the source rock. They're escaping into the sandstone, which is going to be our reservoir, um, through this fault here. Now you can also imagine that if that fault was to um, continue upwards through the sandstone and, and through this con confining layer here, and it connected where you can see how there would easily be another path for it to continue migrating upwards. So keep that in mind as we go forward as well. All right, so it wasn't quite a couple minutes, <laughs> but now we're gonna talk about conventional versus unconventional reservoirs. So whenever we find oil and gas or hydrocarbons trapped within a rock and we're gonna target that, that's what we call a reservoir. So in this case, you can see that there's a, a strong buildup here on both kind of higher ends where the sandstone dips upwards. We call that an anticline. You can see how there's 
oil or hydrocarbons, whatever it is in this case, being trapped there. So we can target that and that would be our reservoir. So if we were to drill a well straight in there, so we've got a, let's say we've got a, a rig here at surface. Let's do, let's do black so you can see it a little bit easier on the camera. We've got a rig here at surface and it's going to drill down and it's going to target this reservoir, okay? So what has happened here, again, it's migrated from the source rock into the sandstone. So we're actually targeting something that is not the source rock itself. So we're going to call that a conventional well or a conventional reservoir. Okay, and typically there's going to be associated with vertical wells, but not always the case. Um, but typically they're going to be associated with vertical wells and older types of development, more historical development. Now, if we were to try and target the source rock itself, because we know there's a lot of hydrocarbons there, they're still trapped, they're going to be a little harder to get out but we can still target them, they're still there, and that's gonna be what we call an unconventional well, or an unconventional reservoir. So if we were to set up a rig over here, and let's say we're gonna drill down, we're targeting the unconventional reservoir, here being the source rock or the shale, and typically this is when you're gonna see, um, this is when you're gonna see horizontal drilling being done and hydraulic fracturing. This is all typically associated with unconventional reservoir development, because again, it's oil and gas trapped in the source rock itself shale, so that's gonna be a whole lot less permeable, so it's gonna be harder to extract. So you wanna have as much formation contact that you can. That's why we're gonna horizontally drill it, and that's also why we're gonna hydraulically fracture it to induce fracture, a fracture network that's gonna allow for the oil and gas that's trapped in those four spaces of the rock to travel into our well a whole lot easier. And I'm gonna run into a bit of an issue here because I'm using a black pen and my shale is also black in this image. All right, so let me switch colors here as we're about to Go horizontally so you can see it. we're going to drill horizontally into this reservoir and then produce from that. So this is an unconventional, unconventional, and then the one here on the right is going to be a conventional. All right, so sorry about the lighting adjustment. Keep changing on the camera. I just changed the setting, so hopefully that will be mitigated now. But now let's talk about hydrocarbons at surface. So this is primarily going to be, you know, let's talk about, you know, if there's a seep, a natural seep that we see on the, on the ground where oil is oozing out of the ground. Uh, you could also have, this would be an instance of groundwater contamination. So you've got hydrocarbons in your, in your groundwater. And we're gonna talk about some of the ways that this can occur. And one of the first things to realize is that hydrocarbons can generate through two different ways. So you can have thermogenic generation, you can also have biogenic generation. So thermogenic generation is the process in which I just talked talk to you about where you have organic matter in the source rock that's buried deep and with time and pressure and heat, it's gonna generate hydrocarbons. Another, the other method is biogenic and that's where, and this typically happens much closer to the surface, so much shallower of depths, where you're going to have organic matter again, um, but it's also going to um, be more so of like a quick, quicker chemical process. It doesn't necessarily require the, the pressures and the heat, but that way can also generate hydrocarbons. So you can also have oil and gas at shallow, at shallow depths as well. So let's talk about kind of like, like case one, you could say, of how oil and gas can end up at surface. So let's say through thermogenic generation, you have, again, what we've been talking about in this entire video, you've got hydrocarbons down here in the source rock or the shale. So in this case, let's say that by just the way that the geologic system is right there, that you have faulting that happens to essentially extend the surface or pretty close to it. Well, that's just creating a pathway for your oil and your gas, your hydrocarbons to follow up through there and head towards surface. Okay, so it's just heading towards, it's just choosing that channel as a pathway towards the surface. So that's one method. Another method could just be through migration over time, if, if, depending on how shallow or how deep this is. It could, over time, travel upwards if it can get through the cap rocks, and typically there's gonna be multiple of them. Shale is very common, so it's gonna have probably a lot of layers to get through, but if there's any type of folding or something that helps it to bypass it, that's gonna be a case where it can also get to the surface. Now another way that oil and gas can get to the surface is through the hand of industry activity, and I'm gonna tell you how. So I, whenever you have a wellboard drilled, you've basically created a conduit into that formation. So let's say here's our wellbore, and of course, again, all of these proportions, all of this is grossly out of proportion. But let's say right there is your well, and so this is this is the inside of your wellbore here. So here's your well, and let's say you've cemented it, so you should have cement behind this. So I've got, I'm drawing in cement here. You can kind of see I'm coming up the back side of it. 
this is the outside of your casing so the casing is meant to protect so let's say that that casing job isn't or that cement job isn't as good or there's some type of integrity issue you've essentially just created a conduit a well is a conduit from these hydrocarbons to the surface but it's also can it also can be a conduit let's say if you have a pocket of of, of gas here hydrocarbons kind of up in here it's more shallow maybe this is biogenic gas or whatever the case might be you've got a little pocket here of of, of gas that is trapped well it, it also can go into this conduit if that's not properly sealed off so it can also just create a way that it can head towards surface how rare this is i'll let this let this up to the, up to you this is definitely something that has occurred in, in pennsylvania this is one way that groundwater contamination has occurred or can occur um, but it's also something that the industry is well aware of so we also so we engineer our cement jobs to make sure that that risk is mitigated as much as we can so we try to engineer out that risk and a quick note too, so that you don't take this video to basically mean that every well uh, <laughs> creates gas uh, and basically enables gas to migrate upward towards our surface water. Let's also talk about how we know or how we can find out where that uh, where hydrocarbons that we may have in, in groundwater, where it's sourced from. So if, if you've got gas in your drinking water, so let's say there's some gas here and now you, you want to find out if it's actually from the well or if it's actually uh, of some other nature. So, so this is actually in your water well you can actually take a sample of the gas and you can actually run it through a gas chromatograph and you can actually see all of the components of that gas so every gas every formation just imagine it to be like a fingerprint so every formation or every reservoir is is going to have a different composition of that gas so, so you can then compare it to let's say a reservoir that you're producing from or some other gas you can know where that has come from you can know if it's actually sourced from the reservoir you're producing from. Then maybe there's a, a leak in your casing and when it's coming up to surface, it, it's somehow getting out. So we can, we can figure that out. And also you can notice that if, if it's maybe it's biogenic or yeah, maybe it's biogenic of nature. So again, this is just ways that we can know where the gas is being sourced from. So that's why sometimes when you have oil and gas in your water, then you, you, we can find out where it's actually being sourced from and we can actually trace it back to what caused it. And of course, sometimes that can just be natural migration. And again, if you've got this biogenic gas pocket up here, it doesn't even have to be biogenic, but if you've got gas close to the surface, and especially if it's just going through sandstone, again, it's less permeable, it can make its way through surface without any help. And of course, there's a lot of migration that is natural. And so we have places that are recorded in history books. We've got places around here, we got a place called Burning Springs, right? So you've got places where you actually have oil and gas coming out of the surface, and it's completely natural. So keep that in mind as well. This is a very natural process and the hydrocarbons, once they're generated, they're gonna to wanna to find their way to surface and they're gonna do the best job they can and get in there. So whether it's a conduit that, that God created through you know, faulting or just nat natural permeability that it's traveling through up to, towards surface, or if it's actually through any type of conduit that is man-made, including a well, including an oil and gas well, uh, then it's gonna to try to find its way towards surface. And this is another reason that old abandoned wells can be a bit of a concern is because typically older wells aren't always gonna have the best cement job ever. And if they are, we, you know, they, they might've degraded now. So that integrity might be a little bit lacking. So again, it's just a conduit. Oil and gas can, can migrate towards surface in a number of ways. And these are just a few of, of the most obvious ones. So keep all these things in mind and be sure to put all of this in perspective too. So do your own, <laughs> do your own research. Don't uh, run off with any crazy conclusions on this. This is just a lot of different ways that it can occur. And I'll let you guys put it into your own perspective. So, so hopefully you guys learned something from this video. I would like to leave you with a quick brain buster uh, just for the fun of it. So here's the question basically. So we've got oil and gas in these different areas. Let's say we're gonna drill for, uh, let's say we're gonna drill into this reservoir like this well has done. So does drilling that well actually mitigate the risk or lessen the risk of that gas the, or the hydrocarbons whatever it is migrating towards surface or does it increase the risk so if you're in the the mitigate tech in the mitigate camp <laughs> then you're believing that well you're you're basically removing the hydrocarbons or you're producing it through your well so that's less hydrocarbons to migrate upwards but in the other camp you've got well you've also created a conduit for it to go at surface so <laughs> A lot of different, a lot of different uh, camps on that, and just a little bit of a brain buster. And, uh, see where you fall on that, and comment below. So, uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, follow us, uh, share this video with someone who you think might find it helpful. Try to be as transparent as we can, and uh, hopefully, everybody uh, finds this video to be beneficial. So, thanks, and we'll see you in the next one.